Coming in at number 10, we have moon bats. Are there moon bats? Questions, answers. In 1835, a series of six articles ran in a New York publication called The Sun. Attributed to astronomer John Herschel, it was said that there were animals living up there on the moon and they'd been discovered via a high powered telescope. Of the animals living on the moon, there were said to be bison, goats, unicorns, tailless beavers, and I'm sorry, but beavers are nothing without their wompy behinds, and none other than bat winged humanoids who built temples, or so they said. Sadly, so the article claims, while these moon creatures had definitely been seen and noted, like 100% actual factual, the high powered telescope that they were spotted with was destroyed in a freak accident. The sun had set fire to the big lens and burned down the entire observatory that definitely existed in the first place. No, absolutely definitely was real and not in any way made up to sell newspapers. Moon bats! I think I'm here for it. Nope, I've checked. I am here for it. Coming in at number 9, we have the Alien Orchestra. On the last mission to the moon before the moon landing, something very weird happened. Apollo 10 was sent into space in May 1969, just one month before the official moon landing. The mission was a rehearsal orbit ahead of the landings, and it seemed to go smoothly, except for one eerie occurrence. It seems that the astronauts on board Apollo 10 heard something very weird as they travelled around the dark side of the moon. Some think it was sounds from a possible alien orchestra. The sounds were kept secret for nearly 50 years, but were released by NASA in 2016. Have a listen to what the astronauts on the spaceship said. Sounds like, uh, you know, outer space time music. Boy, that sure is weird music. It was described as a wooing sound, alien music. It happened at the farthest point of the moon from the Earth, a part of the moon where actually the spaceship had lost contact with NASA. You can't reach the Earth from there, you couldn't back then, so really weird. What were the sounds? We just don't know. Coming into number 8, what really happened on the moon? Russia got there first, or so some people say. Yuri Gagarin from the Soviet Union was the first man in space in 1968. Now, some people believe that the Soviets also made it to the moon first, but the mission went wrong and the astronauts died, so they couldn't chalk it up as a victory. In fact, there is an enduring theory that two Soviet astronauts were lost in space and their existence entirely expunged by the Soviet secret intelligence. Conspiracy theorists claim recordings of the cosmonauts final breaths were actually caught by listening posts around the world, including by the United States. Perhaps there are skeletons on the moon, if the bodies didn't float away. I don't think that can happen. Coming into number 7, nothing happened on the moon. It all happened in a studio. Or oh, so the theory goes. Some people think that absolutely nothing happened on the moon on July 20th, 1969. Many people believe that it was all filmed in a studio. Some think that the studio footage was used only to reinforce the moon landings, as it was risky at whether or not cameras would work in the lunar vacuum. Others straight up do not believe we ever went to the moon at all, and they think that we filmed the whole thing just as a two fingers up to the Soviet Union who were desperate to win the space race. Some say that famous filmmaker Stanley Kubrick directed the moon landings after doing such an amazing and authentic looking job on 2001 A Space Odyssey, which came out in 1968 and is still one of my favourite movies of all time. Coming into number 6, we have the fake moon rocks. It is thought that the moon rocks brought back from the lunar surface are actually fakes from Antarctica. There was no moon rock taking from that moon. It is said that the Marshall Space Flight Center director Werner von Braun went to Antarctica in 1967 in order to gather lunar meteors. The conspiracy gets even wilder. It seems that von Braun was forced to go to Antarctica and collect the fake rocks, because if not, the United States government would expose his secret past as a leading Nazi. Conspiracies. I love them. Coming into number 5, what is happening up there right now? It seems that all of the flags have turned white. This is actually true. The flags on the moon have turned white. Six United States flags have been planted on the moon to date by the six missions that have landed on the lunar surface, but conditions are wild and not all of them are still upright and none of them have retained their colour. To be a flag on the moon is to experience pure UV radiation from unfiltered sunlight. Over 40 years of exposure have absolutely ruined them. It's suspected that the first ever flag planted on the moon in 1969 has almost completely turned to ash. Coming into number 4, the curse of the moon. Is the moon cursed? Not only do people on earth get superstitious about a full moon, it seems that there is a theory out there that says that the lunar surface itself is cursed. All of those who have stepped 
on the moon are said to have met bad luck and misfortune. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were the first men on the moon, that we know of anyway, and they both struggled to deal with life back on Earth. Buzz battled depression and an alcohol addiction. His father died, he got divorced three times, he got into a legal battle with his children, and he was arrested for disorderly conduct. He left NASA and got a job selling used cars. In 2002, when he was 72, he punched a woman in the face. Now, she was antagonizing him for sure, but unfortunately for him, it was caught on camera. Neil Armstrong also suffered. He quit NASA a year after the landing. He became withdrawn and disheartened because he didn't want to be famous. His daughter died, his marriage also fell apart. His mother and father died, and a year later he had a heart attack. He also somehow managed to lose a finger in a truck accident. Michael Collins, the third astronaut who never walked on the moon, actually did the best out of the three. He stayed married, he worked several high powered, high paid jobs, and he claimed to have had a happy life after returning to Earth. But once again, he never set foot on the lunar surface. Coming into number three, we have the moon pyramids. Numerous sources have claimed to have picked up images of pyramids pyramids on the moon. Weird. So called UFO hunter Mark Swala claimed that a NASA image of the Exudus crater has a pyramid in it. It seems that the Apollo 17 mission may have also inadvertently captured images of a pyramid too. So, what could the pyramid be? Well, perhaps number two can answer our questions. We have the alien base. In the 1820s, a Bavarian astronomer, Franz von Pula Gruthenhausen, claimed to have seen entire cities on the moon with his telescope. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. I'm sorry. Astronomer Sir William Herschel also believed that there were alien civilizations up there too. Others think that, yeah, they're up there, but perhaps they've gone underground. So, where's the evidence? It seems that underground tunnels may have been picked up by India's Chandrayaan 1 lunar orbiter. These tunnels on the dark side were likely actually to be in the products of tubes of lava flow that created a massive system of caves, but some people believe that these caves are inhabited by living beings. More recently, there was an article in the Daily Express, which I mean, take that with a pinch of salt, that claimed alien lunar bases were visible on Google Moon. So, I guess we could check that out for ourselves. Google Moon. I'm still here for it. Finally, coming into number one, we have what Neil saw. As we know, Neil Armstrong was the first man on the moon, delivering his notable phrase, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But what if Neil Armstrong did more than just walk on the moon? What if he saw things? It seems that there is indeed a theory that part of the reason he struggled to deal with life back on Earth was because he was actually being heavily oppressed by NASA and the United States government because of what he really saw. Again, this is all just a theory, but it seems seems that the moon landing was initially censored for two whole minutes, and in that time, conspiracists say that both Armstrong and Aldrin saw UFOs. In fact, an alleged transcript between Apollo 11 and NASA has been released, during which Armstrong was reported saying the following, those are giant things, no no no, it's not an optical illusion, no one is going to believe this, we saw some visitors, they were here for a while observing the instruments, there were other spaceships, they were lined up on the other side of the crater, there they are and they're watching us. Again, we don't know if he actually said this, these are just the rumors, but what if he did see UFOs on the moon? In at number 10, with the NASA faked the moon landing, therefore, science is a hoax. Do you understand what this means? NASA can't do it. They can't land man and come back. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin might have been training their whole lives not to become astronauts, but to become a Hollywood actors who are apparently taking this performance to their graves. People believe that NASA had a very large film production team and they faked the whole thing. Maybe they filmed the moon landing in Area 51. One of the most iconic pictures from the apparent moon landing is this one right here. It's Buzz standing right next to the flag. Well, there's theories out there that believe it is. They believe that the flag wasn't filmed on the moon because it showed no presence of wind in which is impossible in a vacuum, which is what the surface of the moon is. NASA replied to that with, it was actually Aldrin twisting the flagpole into the moon's soil and that's why it was waving, or it appeared to be. So was this 
this a moon landing or just a carefully rehearsed production that was filmed? Is this just a Hollywood secret that lives on forever? Number 9, The Space Race. There's a theory to why the moon landing was faked and it seems very plausible. Let me explain. Well, there might have been some motivation for the United States to get to the moon first, and even if they weren't able to beat the Soviet Union, in the space race, they were going to pretend like they did. Landing on the moon was viewed as a national and technological accomplishment that would generate worldwide acclaim. Well, theorists believe that back in 1969, technology wasn't around, and it was way too risky and expensive to go to the moon. This might have been one small step for man and one giant paycheck that the government couldn't afford. I was looking into this claim and it would cost around $25 billion to allocate for the Apollo program, which got man to the moon supposedly. Well, this was around 60% of NASA's budget back in 1969, which would be worth around $150 billion today. How could the government or NASA afford something like that? It would be much cheaper to have a producer film the whole thing and pay millions of dollars for that and also pay millions more for people to never talk about it again. Put it in their contract. Moving into number 8. If we were able to land on the moon in 1969 and 6 times total during 1969 and 1972, which is a span of just 3 years, well why has it been almost 50 years You know, since we landed on the moon? This is pretty suspicious, don't you guys think? Well this is one of many reasons why conspiracy theories suggest man never went to the moon and this theory had me thinking a lot. Why haven't we gone back to the moon if we were able to with a lot less technology back in the day. Just from researching it seems like the consensus is the amount of rocket energy it takes to accelerate to the moon simply doesn't exist anymore. Well isn't this convenient? There has been talks about sending man back to the moon in 2024 but again there has been trouble with the high cost and lack of support. Well from there let's move on to number 7. Well here's a crazy one. A lot of people believe that they know who directed the moon landing. Things are about to get crazy. Well, I've read so many articles and watched many videos on this topic, and a lot of people point back to one American film director. You had a tea break at 4 o'clock, and no, you have a tea break yeah. at no, 6 this o'clock. Is a, no, this is a fresh tea break. He came up to no, me no. and put the teas here. No, no, but if you had a tea break at 4, you don't have to break for this tea break. Well, that was Stanley Kubrick, the man who directed the moon landing. He was an incredible director, screenwriter, and producer. He is frequently cited as one of the greatest and most influential filmmakers in cinematic history. His films are mostly noted for the realism, dark humor, and unique cinematography, extensive set designs, and evocative use of music. So this really sounds like the right man for the job if the moon landing was indeed a Hollywood stunt. Number 6. NASA might have faked the moon landings and this is to avoid humiliation from not being the first nation to the moon after funding so much of the space program and also to ensure that they continued to get funding from the government. NASA raised around 25 billion dollars to go to the moon. How would that look if all that money went to NASA and NASA failed miserably? That would be a very costly mistake. This would not look good for America. Time for a great new American enterprise. Time for this nation to take a clearly leading role in space achievement, which in many ways may hold the key to our future on Earth. President Kennedy really got behind the NASA program in the space race. This nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. So that speech was back in 1961. Kennedy was addressing the Congress that there was an urgent national need and everyone should be a part of this important mission. So NASA was taking on all these responsibilities that seemed, you know, so impossible by people. So people did believe a moon mission was impossible. That's why NASA might have contacted Hollywood, you know, for a favor. Number five theorists believe that the landing module should have created a massive impression on the moon's surface. But looking at many, many pictures out there online, there are no imprints of the landing module that weighs 17 tons. In fact, there should also be a blast crater. We could have seen this in many pictures because there are so many pictures out there, you can see the landing module. But again, there is no crater that it created. Well, to go along with this as well, there was also video footage of the takeoff and people couldn't see visible flames from the rockets. Watch this. I 
I will let you guys determine if you guys think that that clip was real or fake. But for now, let's move on. Number four, people believe that it would actually be impossible to survive the trip to the moon because the astronauts would be exposed to radiation from the Van Allen radiation belt. You have to pass through the Van Allen radiation belt to reach the moon. There was no way around it, so astronauts had to be inside of the Van Allen radiation belt for a couple of hours. Being exposed to strong radiation like that would instantly kill you. So people believe that it's impossible that NASA was somehow able to find a way through it without dying. Moving into number three, here's another theory that might prove that the moon landing was indeed filmed in a massive production studio. People have increased the speed of the video footage by exactly 2.5 times. At that speed, it seems like astronauts were moving the same speed as Earth's gravity. So why is it that exactly 2.5 times the speed they seem to be moving normally? It is believed that all of the astronauts were filming while well, they were trying to move on purpose, you know, very slow to mimic how it might be up there on the moon because of the gravity, it's different. Well, to explain the impressive height of the jump seen in the video footages all over line, people claimed that there are hidden cables and wires they were used. Number two, Nixon might have planned a huge role in faking the moon landing. All six of the moon landings happened during the Nixon administration. No other national leader has claimed to have landed astronauts on the moon. I thought this fact was really odd and it kind of had me thinking a little bit. I was like, wow, was the moon landing actually a hoax? I mean, no other nation has been able to land on the moon despite rapid technology since the 60s. Why has no other president been able to send more men to the moon other than Nixon? And finally, number one, there are theories that believe that all of the NASA photos taken on the moon were all fake. Take a look at this. Well, we're going back to this famous picture again, but this time, instead of looking at the famous American flag, take a look at the background. There seems to be no stars. Stars should be prevalent during this picture because it was complete darkness. If you take a look at the footprints left on the moon, people are saying that it shouldn't actually be able to leave, you know, that distinct of a footprint due to the rough and hard surface. People have claimed to see a reflection of camera equipment on Neil Armstrong's helmet. I'm not sure if I could agree with that. I don't know what I see. Also, people are saying that they can see a person taking the picture in the reflection, but the person isn't wearing a spacesuit. It was just a film, someone on set. All right, number 10. Is it a space station? I thought I'd start this one off with a comment that inspired me off the last video. YouTube user Darth Elias, I believe, commented that that's no moon, it's a space station on the last video. So I looked into it and unfortunately, not much came up. While a space station on or in the moon might be an interesting idea, it's not the current reality. There is an international space station orbiting Earth that gathers some really cool data though, so yeah, maybe they'll move it to the moon. But I really like where your head's at, and there's a little more information on a similar theory, which brings us into number nine. It's an alien spaceship. Space station, spaceship, spacecraft, they are all similar, right? On the same wavelength, at least. So have aliens been living inside the moon this entire time? Let's crack into it. Okay. An article titled, Is the Moon a Creation of Alien Intelligence? came out in a Soviet magazine called Sputnik in 1970. This article was written by Michael Vasik and Alexander Sherbakov from what was then known as the Soviet Academy of Sciences, now known as the Russian Academy of Sciences. They think that under a rocky layer of the moon, there is an armored hull protecting the spacecraft housing unknown beings. People who believe this theory cite that the moon rang like a bell when it was landed on, which was a true quote. This comes from an article in Popular Science where it said the moon rang like a bell for an hour after the Apollo 12 deliberately crashed its ascent stage of its lunar module. People have used this descriptor to allege that, hey, a bell is hollow and it rings, wouldn't the moon be hollow if it rings too? Plus, the moon isn't as dense as the Earth. It's 3.3 grams per centimeter cubed, whereas Earth is 5.5 grams per centimeter cubed. So is it a space station? Well, the thing is it can't maintain its mass and gravitational field without a dense core, so only if the aliens have a super dense core, then maybe. Now on to number eight, lunatics. Well, 
This isn't on the moon, it's some scary stuff about the moon's possible influence. I know my mom tells me more weird things happen around full moons than usual and she blames it for a bunch of stuff and I've heard a lot of people do it too. In the middle ages, scientists and philosophers thought a full moon caused unusual behavior as well. The unusual behavior they thought it caused though? They thought it caused things as serious as seizures, fever, and rheumatism. If I lost you on rheumatism, don't worry, I looked it up too and those who already know, don't rub it in, okay? Rheumatism is any disease marked by inflammation and pain in the joints, muscles, or fibrous tissue, especially rheumatoid arthritis. So yeah, scientists and philosophers thought that the moon did this. Seriously. And they even had a name for the people under the influence of a full moon. Lunatics. Surprise, that's where the word comes from. Break it down. Luna, the Latin word for moon. Yeah, some more Latin. Ex luna scientia. From the moon. Knowledge. Or from the moon. Rheumatoid arthritis. You decide. On to number seven, space trash. So it's scary that our world is filling up with trash faster than we can find places for it. But newsflash, there's also trash on the moon. Most likely upwards of 400,000 pounds of it too. Most of it is old lunar probes or other spaceships that were built just to see if they could land on the surface. But also lunar orbiters that crashed into the surface. This is starting to sound more messy than my room. Their excuse for not cleaning it up is that they can study to see how the materials weather over time as the moon's surface is an environment unlike ours. But if I use that excuse, my roommates call me a lunatic. Ayy. On to number six, space snakes. A NASA astronaut who has been on six space flights says he has seen space snakes. Dr. Story Musgrave, a man with six academic degrees, says he saw things that he couldn't explain properly. He said in a 1994 interview that on two of his missions he saw a snake out there. He describes it as six to eight feet long, rubbery with internal waves in it and that it follows you for a rather long period of time. He thinks there are a bunch of different creatures out there in the great expanse of space so if you thought snakes on a plane was something, well honey you got a big storm coming, honestly. But on to number five. Is there a graveyard on the moon? Among the space junk and other mementos left on that big ball of cheese in the sky, there's another guy. A dead guy. A dead legendary planetary geologist to be more precise. On January 6th, 1998, Eugene Shoemaker, the man, the planetary geologist, the legend, was launched in a memorial capsule aboard Lunar Prospector to the moon. And the man had it done in style, let me say. Around the capsule was a piece of brass foil inscribed with an image of a comet hail bop and an image of meteor crater in northern Arizona. And how could I forget? A passage from William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. And which one, you may be asking? And oh, you don't have to ask twice. Or ask it all. I'll say it for you. It read, And when he shall die, take him and cut him out in little stars, and he will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night and pay no worship to the garish sun. I think the guy kind of liked the moon, but it's nice. But anyways, you're welcome. If you're not shook, get ready for the next one. This one is number four. Moonquakes? So astronauts be tripping. Seriously. NASA has footage in the archives from the Apollo missions of the 1970s and astronauts were stumbling around. But why? Maybe moonquakes. Over the five years astronauts left seismic sensors on the moon, they recorded evidence of more than 12,000 moonquakes. And a heads up, while our earthquakes typically last under a minute, a moonquake can last an afternoon and often will last over an hour. They last longer because the moon doesn't have large bodies of water water to combat the seismic vibrations like the earth does. So if you're hoping to run away to the moon to get away from the natural disasters that happen on earth, then <laughs> you are not going to find that escape on the moon. I'm so sorry, because the moon is shook fan. That was cringy, I'm so sorry, but we must continue on. On to number three, the lunar lava tube or many lunar lava tubes. So there's tunnels on the moon too. Maybe the moon could be a large organic space rock adapted to be an alien spaceship, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. These tunnels I'm talking about are an underground network of lava tubes or pits on the surface of the moon that are entrances to underground tunnels that were once filled with lava. A Japanese probe even found a cave 30 miles long and 60 miles wide. So there are unexplored tunnels on the moon. These could hold subsurface ice and therefore water, which is a super important resource that, if discovered, could be used by astronauts during future missions. So. I'm thinking kind of a fun place to hold a party. A search party, of course, but a party. So on to number two, moon dust. Okay, so in the last video, it was brought up that people think that the moon rocks brought back from the lunar surface were fake. This time, let's get more detailed, a little more nitty gritty. Let's talk 
dust. In 1972, while there for Apollo 17, astronaut Harrison Schmidt sneezed. Then, for a full day, he got described as what he said was a lunar hay fever. That's what he got. His eyes watered, his throat throbbed, and he broke into sneezing fits. But why? He's another one who bit the dust. Just kidding. He's the only one who inhaled the dust. Moon dust. Which is very dangerous. Moon dust isn't like the dust here on Earth. The particles on the moon are sharp, never erode, and are mainly made up of meteorite pieces. NASA tested a fake version of moon soil and its effect when human cells are exposed to it, and the easily inhalable dust sliced and destroyed up to 90% of lung and brain tissue within 24 hours. Fun. So, what about our buddy Harrison Schmidt? Good news for him is that he only took one breath after tracking some moon dirt from coming inside the spaceship, so he's all good and still alive today. But we should all be careful if we want to explore the tunnels in the moon. The moonquakes could really shake loose some of those dangerous particles, so suits will have to be real tight. But let's get into, lastly, number one, moon warming. Another reason suits have to be tightly sealed? To regulate temperature. The moon doesn't share the same temperature as the Earth, as it can vary from minus 173 degrees Celsius all the way to 127 degrees Celsius, or minus 230 degrees Fahrenheit and up to 260 degrees Fahrenheit. Whichever way you measure it, it's a big, you know, distance apart from what we have here on Earth. The thing is, the temperature also changed a lot right after the astronauts landed. It the moon's surface temperature went up nearly 4 degrees Fahrenheit or 2 degrees Celsius. After moon dust gave Schmidt the fever, well, were people giving the moon the fever right back? Probably not. The real reason was probably one that came up in a study in the Journal of Geophysical Research. To sum it up, the story basically said that the 12 Apollo astronauts that walked on the moon kicked up a lot of dirt, and this uncovered a darker soil underneath, and the more heat absorbing soil that was now uncovered then absorbed enough solar radiation to raise the temperature of the entire moon's surface. Like, have you ever sat on a turf field and felt that it was just so hot? It's because the crumb rubber turf retains the heat much more than regular grass. The dark moon soil is just another thing that you don't want to lay down on on a sweltering day. It retains so much heat. So other than that, we basically warmed the moon. Just a tad, just a little bit. At number 10, we have Moon Base. What's going up on the big old moon? Is it just a rock in space with American flag blowing, but not really because there's no wind up there? Or has the American government built a base on there and they're doing secret science stuff that they'll never tell us about? Well, maybe. Well, there's a lot of people who believe that on the moon there's a top secret base where they're doing secret experiments. Experiments with alien tech, teleportation devices, and maybe Gundam wings. It's all taking place up there. Why would this be true? Well, because it would be the best place to hide the most sensitive devices from the public. Like imagine if there's some sort of Mega Man blaster in development. It would need to be in a top secret facility that could technically be invaded at any time. But if it was on the moon, you would literally need to take a spaceship to the moon, land it on the moon, break into a top secret facility, make it back to your ship, off the moon, and then to Earth without destroying what you have just stolen. That is the real Mission Impossible. A moon base would be one of the most secure facilities in the galaxy. Nothing goes in or out without high level clearance. Not a bad idea. At number nine, we have the Moon Eye. With satellite tech, you can pull off insane levels of surveillance. I'm sure if we could see what the NSA was seeing through their satellites, we would all buy the thickest blinds available. But what if they had a device so powerful it could see your pores from space? That, ladies and gentlemen, is the Moon Eye. It's the idea that a large portion of the moon has been hollowed out and turned into a massive surveillance device that is built into the actual moon itself. The device is the most powerful telescope slash microscope hybrid ever built. It's thought to be the size of a small city and takes an entire crew to operate. It has massive data storage centers so it can keep logs and records of everything it sees, which is a lot. It has surveillance capabilities like night vision, thermal, x-ray, and probably some vision that we don't even know about. And the reason we have never seen this thing is because it's hidden under a giant hologram. God, I love looking into these conspiracy theories. It is so great. At number eight, we have the moon isn't real. This is one of the wildest ones I have come across. A lot of people out there, well, I don't know if it's a lot, maybe it's just a vocal minority, but you can definitely say they are a loud community, but they think the moon isn't real. They think the whole thing is a hologram. While reading into these think pieces, 
pieces on the moon being fake, I kept asking myself, what would be the benefit of the moon not being real? Oh, and there are some interesting answers. Let's start with the government controlling the day-night cycle. When you see the moon in the sky, you know that it's night, except for when you see one of those day moons. Get out of here, day moon, you make me feel weird. Back on track, if the government controlled all the clocks and the moon, they could control when we think night and day is, and then they could also put holograms over the sky to make us think that it's nighttime when it's really not, and then they could put us into a sleepy state and hit us with alpha brainwave controlling technology. I'm gonna stop here because this one is getting out of control. At number seven, we have Stargate. This is what I want, baby. This is what I want. I am tired of driving places and taking planes. I just want to walk through a portal and be like, yes, I'm in Bali, oh my god. And they might have this on the moon. Oh my god, what, are you serious? I'm gonna stop that now. The moon base theory is also connected to this one. The way humans were able to build a base on the moon without anyone knowing is through a Stargate teleportation system. If this theory is true, it's thought that the American government has discovered teleportation technology and you're thinking, sweet, why didn't they share this with us? Well, the tech was dangerous and it would have destroyed the automotive, gas, and airplane industry, thus tanking the world economy. So they kept it secret. They moved the tech to the moon so they could use it to teleport back and forth super easily, and they built a base on the moon. If this is true, please bring it to Earth so I can teleport right into Starbucks. Yas! At number six, we have moon aliens. All right, this one kind of has two parts. There is the idea that there's an alien race living on the moon inside of it. Even though the moon has no atmosphere on the outside, on the inside of the moon, there's a whole world with lush life, possibly even a small sun in there giving everything energy. Other people think that there could be a human colony on the moon and the people born up there would be human but also alien because they're born on the moon, you guys understand. At number five, we have the moon landing isn't real. This is a pretty mainstream conspiracy theory about the moon. And this is why I'm sliding in it at number five. There is some evidence as to why the moon landing could be fake. It would have been very beneficial to the Americans to get to the moon first. The shuttle that landed on the moon left no crater. There's scenes in the moon landing footage where it seems like the American flag is blowing in the wind even though there is no wind up there. Honestly, at this point, you pick. Do you believe it or do you not believe it? Half-Life 3 just got announced. I really don't care if the moon landing is fake. I got better things to do. I'm gonna go play Half-Life. At number four, we have the moon will crash into us. Sometimes the moon looks big, sometimes it looks small. Is it getting close? I don't know science stuff, but according to the nerds who know all the space stuff, the moon is on a collision course for Earth. What? The Earth and the moon are slowly rotating closer together each year? Does that mean one day the moon will crash into the Earth like Majora's Mask? I wonder if we'll have that creepy face on it like, eee! Well, all of you at home are like, well, Che, when will this happen? I have a family. I need to protect them. Well, I have some terrifying news for you. The moon is estimated to crash into the Earth in 65 billion years, so you're gonna be okay. When the sun runs out of nuclear fuel, it will become a red dwarf. The moon will then slowly start rotating towards us because of the change in gravity, and then billions of years after that, it'll probably crash into us, and maybe we'll still be here, probably not. At number three, we have the moon will explode. Okay, let's reach into the hypothetical future where there's multiple colonies on the moon. Those colonies get mad at each other, and they start the moon wars. Very good movie series. Somebody nukes the moon with the biggest moon nuke that has ever nuked and then the moon explodes. What will happen to all the people on Earth? Well, all the oceans and tides will go bonkers. Maybe tsunamis and massive amounts of destruction because the moon affects all the tides. Also, big fiery rocks would rain down from the sky into Earth and kill a bunch of people. And there might be a massive amount of debris that would cover the Earth, which would then block out the sun, and then we would all freeze to death or die from starvation because we would have no sunlight to grow food. Also, you would be very, very sad because you're not getting enough vitamin D. And number two, we have Neil Armstrong is an alien. We have all seen the meme where if you take Neil A and turn it backwards, it turns into alien. We know this. If you haven't seen this, then quit your job and start looking at more memes. Like, what do you doing with your life, it's memes. But the theory is that on this moon colony we talked about earlier on the list, Neil was born up there on the moon. Then he was brought to Earth later to test to see if someone could make an adjustment from moon man to earth man, and it worked. The reason he was chosen to take a flight back to the moon is because he had adjusted to moon life, he knew how to live up there, and so he could go home to his moon people. And Buzz Aldrin, well, he was just a regular dude who was blown away by the whole thing. And number one on the list is the moon is a death star. That's no moon, it's a space station. And the Oscar goes to 
Che Guevara. For our number one spot, we have the theory that the moon is actually a massive weapon. It was originally the moon, but it was either reconstructed to be a massive energy weapon or a massive energy weapon was built and then took the place of the moon. We literally like hurled it into space and then we replaced it with this world ending cannon. What would be the purpose of something like this? The happier theory is that we have alien enemies and the Death Star moon thing is built to protect us, which is still scary because if that was true, this would mean that there are aliens out there that are trying to kill us. The other theory is that the moon battle station was built to control us. With the most powerful people in the world, aka the Illuminati, having a weapon that could wipe us all out, we would be forced to bow to their oppression. Huge bummer. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Mystery House. This is a pretty recent weird discovery that was made in November of last year by the China National Space Administration rover U-22. This rover travels around the far side of the moon exploring and giving us insights into what lies beyond our point of view. This rover has been traveling through the 186 kilometer wide Von Karman crater and this is when the rover ended up spotting what appeared to be a sort of cube shape unidentified object which is now being referred to as a mystery house. The rover is now on its way to investigate further, but we don't yet quite have the answers to this mystery. When the mystery house was first spotted, it wasn't exactly far from the rover, as it was only 80 meters away, but that does not mean the rover can get there quickly. The approach for this rover is expected to take somewhere from two to three lunar days, which is about two to three months in Earth time. This is because the rover moves quite slowly and the path to explore this cube object is not a clear one. While we patiently wait for the answers, we can always speculate. Drop a comment down below with your best guesses, and who knows, maybe we'll We'll come up with the next viral conspiracy theory. In our number nine spot today, we have the green gel. Another discovery that was made by the U-22 rover, which first made its lunar landing in February of 2019, came in August of that year. On Lunar Day 8, which began on July 25th, the rover was doing its thing, finding its way through an area that was filled with a bunch of small impact craters. On July 28th, as the team here on Earth was preparing to power down the rover for its little midday nap, which is meant to protect the machine from high temperatures and radiation from the sun, which, if you take away all that scary space stuff, sounds like the cutest little thing ever, a little rover nap. But anyway, as this thing's getting ready for its little rover nap, one member on the team was checking over some images that were taken by the rover's main camera, and that's when they spotted a small crater that seemed like it contained some sort of material that had a color and a sort of luster that was significantly different from the lunar area surrounding it. The team then changed the plans they had for the rover and decided that instead of going west, which was next on the schedule, they instead would take a little detour to go and check out this mystery material. The rover carefully made its way over to the crater and examined it with both its visible and near-infrared spectrometer, which is a thing that detects lights that are scattered or reflected off of material, which helps to reveal what they're made up of. For a while, no one knew exactly what the substance was, and it was only being described as being gel-like and being a weird color. But after almost a year of more research, it was finally identified. It's rock! More specifically, rock that was melted together, most likely in the heat of impact from a meteorite. It's insane that something like that created a dark green glistening impact melt, but it's also very cool. I'm just glad we got down to the bottom of this mystery. In our number eight spot today, we have orange colored moon. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. This wasn't exactly found on the far side of the moon. I know, I know, I get it, you're upset, but I just truly thought it was so cool. I really wanted to share it with you guys, so bear with me. All the way back in 1972, Apollo 17 astronaut and geologist Harrison Schmidt was exploring around the Taurus Littrow landing site when he stumbled upon some orange colored soil. It was a completely unexpected find and one that they weren't quite sure about. What was causing this soil to get its orange color, and why was it different from all the other soil around it? Luckily, especially since it's been so long, they've been able to look more into it, and there are actually some answers to this moon mystery. After more research, lunar geologists were able to conclude that the orange soil happened as a result of an explosive volcanic eruption that occurred over 3.64 billion years ago. That's so cool! This orange soil exists because of molten drops spraying out from an awesome lunar volcanic eruption billions of years ago. Space never fails to absolutely amaze me. 
I'm starting to think that geologists have the coolest job in the world, by the way. In our number seven spot today, we have the Tsiolkovsky Crater. This is obviously a crater, and it has been named after the Russian scientist Konstantin Tsiolkovsky. It was originally discovered on photographs that were sent back to Earth from the Russian spacecraft Luna 3. This crater is a large impact crater that lies in the southern hemisphere, but you might be sitting there thinking, there is a lot of craters on the moon, so what makes this one so special? Well, this crater is actually one of the most important figures found on the far side of the moon because it has a complex central peak and a smooth lava flooded floor on top of a few other interesting geographical features that make it a very exciting and important place for future lunar exploration. In our number six spot today, we have reflections. Like I mentioned before, for a long time it was widely believed that the far side of the moon was referred to as the dark side of the moon because it didn't receive any sunlight, rather than the truth, which is that the name is only to suggest that it's the side we know little about because we can't see it. That is why this discovery was a bit of a shock to some people. Not only is the far side of the moon not dark and does receive sunlight, but the far side of the moon actually reflects more light than our near side. This is because the side that we see has these incredibly dark, smooth, low-lying plains that are from ancient seas of molten magma that were on the moon, and while this is incredibly fascinating, it doesn't really reflect light very well. And while the far side reflects light better, it's still not that great. The moon is significantly darker than it appears to us, with most of the surface being a color closer to that of asphalt. In our number five spot today, we have the Sea of Moscow. This is a lunar mar that is one of the very few that sit on the far side of the moon, which is exactly what makes it so fascinating, as well as the fact that we aren't exactly sure of its origins. Just so we're all on the same page, Lunar Mar is the large, dark, basaltic plains that are located on the moon. The basaltic plains are of course made up of basalt, which is a result of the rapid cooling of low viscosity lava that is rich in magnesium and iron that is at the surface or very near to the surface, and this appears both on the earth and on the moon. For a while it was believed that this was formed due to some ancient volcanic eruption, but there is also speculation that it may have been from a meteorite cluster impact instead. Either way, whichever is responsible for this lunar mar, the moon sure was having a very stressful time. In our number four spot today, we have the crust. Remember how people used to believe that there was a face on the moon? Well, that was thanks to that lunar mar we just talked about. So, while the Sea of Moscow and things sort of similar do exist on the far side of the moon, there really isn't a lot of Maria on the side that we can't see. What was called the Lunar Far Side Highlands problem became a thing of human interest in 1959 when that Soviet Luna 3 was able to send the first images of the dark side of the moon all the way back to Earth. On the side of the moon we can see, the near side, we see a lot of variation in coloring and that is due to this Maria. This knowledge is what led to scientists being shocked when they first saw the other side the far side, because the far side doesn't look the same as the near side at all. While a lot of the near side is Maria, the far side is mostly mountains and craters, and this led to the question and mystery of why. For 55 years this question plagued researchers, but now we think we may have an answer. Scientists realized that this difference and the reason for the lack of Maria might just be due to the difference in the crustal thickness of the side of the moon we can see and the far side, and this is just the consequence of how the moon originally formed. The most widely accepted answer of how the moon formed is the idea of some sort of Mars-sized object slamming into Earth shortly after the planet came into existence, and this gigantic impact flung a bunch of stuff out into space and this would eventually form our moon. That's like the very basis of the theory. So after this impact, the moon and Earth were both super hot, like so hot that parts of them vaporized which created a disk of rock, magma, and vapor found around the Earth. Then, since the moon is smaller, it cooled faster, but the moon used to be like 20 times closer to us than it is now, so the far side of the moon cooled faster than the near side, and this created a difference in temperature between the two halves, which then led to impact the crustal formation on the moon. That was a lot of info, but how crazy is that? I always find it so interesting to learn about how each and every step in the formation of our solar system has affected the way things are in ways we don't even really fully realize. In our number three spot today, we have craters. Okay, so now we know about why one side has more Maria, but now why does the far side have more craters than the near side? 
for a while people thought this was because the Earth was acting as a sort of shield for the moon, but we now know that that is not true. The Earth only obscures about four square degrees out of 41,000 square degrees of the sky that can be seen from the moon, so obviously this means that the Earth is actually a terrible shield for the moon. This is what led researchers to believe that lava flows are more likely responsible, and this definitely goes back to the crust as well and the origins of the moon that we just discussed. The crust of the moon mostly consists of plagioclases, which were formed when aluminum and calcium condense and combined with silicates in the mantle of the moon. Like we talked about earlier, since the far side was, well, further from the super hot, slower cooling Earth side after that big impact, these elements cooled sooner and the crust that formed was thicker. So when meteor impacts happened on the near side of the moon, there was a more likely chance of them cracking into the thinner crust, which then releases the basaltic lava. But on the far side of the moon, the thicker crust puts up much more of a fight, and now the moon is just left with these cool battle scars. In our number two spot today, we have the South Pole Aitken Basin. Speaking of craters on the far side of the moon, this one is an immense impact one. Measured to be roughly 2,500 kilometers in diameter and between 5.2 to 8.2 kilometers deep, this is one of the largest known impact craters in our entire solar system. That is no easy feat and definitely means that the moon has seen its fair share of cosmic disturbances. This basin is not only the largest and deepest on the moon, but it is also the oldest. While this is located on the far side of the moon, apparently just the outer rim of the basin can be seen from Earth, and this is due to the huge mountain chain that is called the Leibniz Mountains. Remember those missions launched by the CNSA that we started this list off with? Well, one of their spacecrafts actually landed in this basin in 2019 and began to explore all around it, which means that all it has to offer is soon to be uncovered. In our number one spot today, we have the Eastern Sea. This is a lunar Mar that is located on the western border of the near side and far side of the moon and is partially visible, but pretty difficult to see from Earth. What is so cool about this one is the way it shows up on lunar images, kind of like a target ring bullseye. It is believed that this is an impact crater that was caused by an asteroid-sized object. Estimated to be around 64 kilometers in diameter, traveling at speeds of around a calm, casual 15 kilometers per second. This collision is said to have caused ripples in the lunar crust, which is what gives it that ring effect. At the moment, we don't have samples directly from this area, so we aren't sure what the exact age is yet, but it is thought to be the moon's most recent or youngest impact basin, thought to be quite a bit younger than the Imbrium Basin, which is about 3.85 billion years old. In our number 10 spot, we have it's a death trap. An unsettling reason for not returning to the moon would be because it's supposedly a bit of a death trap. Apparently the moon's surface is littered with craters and boulders that threaten safe landings. Well, yep, that checks out as one of the biggest reasons. Why would we risk all that hard work and money if once we're finally there, the craters on the moon are the reason for the project to fail? We should definitely maybe send some moon rovers there to help us figure out that equation first. Uh, apparently before the first landing, the US government spent billions to develop and launch and deliver satellites to map the surface of the moon, but they still can't predict meteorite impacts that might happen after. So anyways, it's a mission just to plan the landing and even still, they'll never 100% know that everything will be fine. I can see why they may be hesitant. In our number nine spot, we have the ending of the Cold War. One of the reasons it is said that we never returned to the moon was because the Cold War ended. Initially, getting to the moon, well, it was a race against Russia. NASA, as we know, won and got to the moon first, but in any case, they still wanted to go back to get a ton of research before Russia. But once the Cold War ended, the tension and competition wasn't as high. Yeah, that makes sense. That, to me, isn't really a good enough reason to not have gone back to the moon in you know the last 50 years but I could definitely see it being a motivating factor for not needing to go back as quickly. In our number eight spot, we have theoretical benefits. Allegedly, the benefits of going back to the moon are largely theoretical. Of course, scientists believe that potential research would be a key reason to go back, but it doesn't seem to be a good enough reason. Apparently, this isn't a practical reason, and the risks would be too high for such an adventure to occur. If the moon were to eventually be used 
as a refueling place for larger expeditions, then that's a different story. But as it is, there isn't a good enough reason to return and the government doesn't want to throw away billions on the possibility of benefits. Makes sense. In our number 7 spot, we have low funds. This one is probs one of the biggest and most likely reasons. Funds. Not that NASA doesn't already have a ton of funds for research purposes, but imagine how much more they would need to get to the moon again. They would have to build a whole new rocket, which I don't know how many employees that will take, plus you know, you have to pay the astronauts a ton, plus all the mathematical scientists that plan the trip and whatever they do. <laughs> I don't work at NASA, okay? So I have no idea how many employees this expedition would require, but my point is that a lot of time will be needed and therefore a lot of moolah. Probably one of the biggest reasons why the presidents are backing another landing because of how much money from people's taxes it will require. But it is curious why only approximately 0.4% of the US federal budget gets given to NASA these days, when back in the 60s, NASA was receiving around 4%. So anyways, this low budget reasoning makes sense. Especially if NASA can't show a clear profit margin from doing the trip, the government is not going to want to contribute to this. In our number 6 spot we have aliens reside on the moon. This is a fun theory and one that China almost thought to be true with their U-2-2 moon rover discovered a mystery hut on the moon earlier this year. It turned out to be a rock on a crater rim which truly made me laugh out loud. But still guys, who knows, it might be possible, why not? We can't be the only living creatures in the universe. Also, anyone remember Neil Armstrong apparently commented on seeing big, enormous creatures on the moon? Even though he denies it, NASA employees confirmed that they heard him talk about them, so it's very possible that we aren't returning to the moon because of the enormous moon aliens. Who knows? In our number 5 spot we have aliens on earth. This is another fun theory as hey, we all don't know what's happening in area 51 and all the underground secret bases of the world, so maybe there are aliens on earth persuading us to not go back to the moon. There have been many reports of the grey people in the underground bases and then of course the reptile people are a popular point of discussion, so who knows, perhaps us humans aren't just humans anymore living on this planet. Perhaps there are shapeshifters around us telling us to not focus on the moon for whatever reason. Could be because they are from it. In our number 4 spot we have billionaires might go there anyway. One of the reasons NASA might be holding off on returning to the moon could be because billionaires like Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos might be going there anyways. Why bother wasting money on a trip if we could ask the billionaires funding their own trip to let us, you know, tag along for research reasons. I'm sure NASA could buy a seat on their spaceship. It's probably more affordable than spending the money to build their own ship and pay their own employees. Makes sense to me. In our number 3 spot we have we never went in the first place. <laughs> well, obviously this is a popular one in the online forum chat rooms. The infamous debate, did we even go to the moon ever or was it filmed in a Hollywood studio? Well look, I guess it could be possible. They could have a Hollywood style studio in Area 51 where they filmed it and then none of the employees would say anything because they've already sworn to secrecy anyway. Or perhaps their memories could have been wiped and they wouldn't remember anyway. This would be quite unsettling if true, but I honestly don't think we'll ever know for sure. <laughs> I wish I could go to NASA, watch the astronauts get in the spaceship, watch it take off and then watch it land days or weeks later. Then I would be 100% convinced. <laughs> if you or if you know someone who has done this, please share your experience in the comment section below and make all the non-believers believe. In our number 2 spot we have slim pickings. An issue that NASA in particular might be dealing with that is a little unsettling is the lack of young people interested in the idea of being an astronaut or scientist these days. Apparently astronauts say that American kids were polled and they say that they dream more about becoming YouTube stars rather than astronauts and that's a big problem for NASA. 
<laughs> Not to mention that we now live in a society of kids that want the quick fix success route and don't know the value of working hard. Apparently the average person that works at NASA's Johnson Space Center is closer to 60 years old. Yikes. NASA astronaut Rusty Schwickhart was quoted as saying, that's not where innovation and excitement comes from. Excitement comes from when you've got teenagers and 20 year olds running programs. When Elon Musk lands a rocket booster, his whole company is yelling and screaming and jumping up and down. Honestly, it makes sense. Young people aren't, you know, worn out yet and still see life in so much color and that is what is required for new creative ideas to flow. And in our number one spot, we have political reasons. Political reasons? Pfft. Why is it always about politics? Well, apparently this is the number one reason that NASA has not returned to the moon. Apparently this reasoning has been spoken out quite often over the last while. In 2019, NASA's administrator, Jim Bridenstine, reportedly said that, quote, if it wasn't for the political risk, we would be on the moon right now. In fact, we would probably be on Mars. There is much speculation as to what the heck that means, but perhaps another country with more power than the US might have a hold on them? Or by political risk, do they mean that it would be such a large spend of people's tax dollars that it may be hard for one party to be reelected? In any case, that statement is so vague and the people should really be harder on NASA to just, you know, tell the truth. It's one thing if we're not going there because it's not necessary. It's another if we're not going there to be strategic for election time. Number 10. Extended space travel can change your DNA. Astronaut Scott Kelly, who spent a year at the International Space Station in 2016, returned to find out that he was two inches taller than his departing height. The new physical differences between Kelly and his identical brother, Mike, also an astronaut, were startling. Scientists compared the DNA of the two and found that besides growing two inches, Kelly's gut bacteria was completely different and his gene expression had changed. Scientists concluded that the changes were caused by the stresses of space travel, which can cause changes in a cell's biological pathways. Now, Although Kelly eventually returned to his original height, his other genetic changes were seemingly irreversible, meaning Kelly and his brother are no longer identical twins, which is insane. Number 9. Time on Earth moves faster than time in space. Yes, this isn't just something that was made up for the film Interstellar, it's a real thing. Time moves differently in space. Due to time dilation, a percept of theory of relativity referencing a difference in the elapsed time measured by two observers, astronauts stationed in outer space lose approximately one second per week. The spin of Earth, its orbit around the Sun, and the solar system's motion around the Milky Way all combine to decrease the time we experience experience on Earth. Though minuscule, the second per week dilation results in nearly a minute lost annually and more than 8.5 minutes lost each decade. Number 8. An astronaut was covered in toxic ammonia during a spacewalk. Bob Kerbeam was no stranger to spacewalking when he was installing upgrades to the International Space Station. But while out there, a cooling line broke and spewed toxic ammonia all over his suit. Now for those of you who don't know, a spacecraft is a closed system, meaning that the only air that you have to work with is the air you brought up with you. Now, first, Bob had to stop the leak, then he had to figure out how he was going to get back in the space shuttle without bringing the volatile ammonia contaminating his spacesuit. But some good old fashioned science helped with that one. Ammonia has a low boiling point, so he just needed to vaporize it off his suit. To do this, he simply baked himself in sunlight for an extra 30 minutes, arguably one of the most surreal and terrifying sunbathing methods a human can experience. Later, a fellow astronaut brushed off the suit and equipment. To be extra cautious, they partially vented the shuttle airlock, and next to be even more careful, the shuttle crew all wore oxygen masks inside until they were positive nothing had made its way in. Nothing did make its way in, thankfully, but that sounds like a terrifying experience. Number 7. Magnetic Explosions Every day, the space around Earth booms with giant explosions. Yep, explosions. 
When the solar wind, the stream of charged particles from the sun, pushes against the magnetic environment that surrounds and protects Earth, it tangles the sun and Earth's magnetic fields. Eventually, the magnetic field lines snap and realign, shooting away nearby charged particles. This explosive event is known as a magnetic reconnection. While we can't see magnetic reconnection with our bare eyes, we can see its effects. Occasionally, some of the perturbed particles pour into Earth's upper atmosphere, where they spark the auras. Magnetic reconnection happens all across the universe, wherever there are twisting magnetic fields. NASA missions like the Magnetospheric Multiscale Mission measure reconnection events around Earth, which helps scientists understand reconnection where it's harder to study, like in flares on the sun, in areas surrounding black holes, and around other stars. I just don't like the idea of things constantly exploding around us, and we can't do anything about it. Number 6. A jammed solar panel threatened the safety of the entire ISS. Astronaut Scott Parazinski had to install a new module on the ISS that would serve as a node for the addition of future research laboratories. Part of the mission required changing the location of an array of solar panels. Things were going along really, really well until the crew inside commanded these larger solar panels to extend, he said. They got jammed up and the panels began to tear. It was unsafe to continue to extend this panel any further, you couldn't retract it either, Scott said. There was concern that if we even tried to undock the space shuttle, it might rip apart and hit the shuttle. After 72 hours of grueling work on the ground, NASA came up with a plan. Scott would have to travel further away from the safety of an airlock than had ever been previously attempted. It wasn't only the distance that was nerve wracking, as Scott explained, there was a real danger that we could do even worse damage to the space station. Then there was a part Partial risk to myself because if there was any metal to metal connection with the solar panel or arsing, it could actually electrocute me or cause ignition of the 100% oxygen in my spacesuit. All the tools I was working with had to be specially insulated. The metal parts of my spacesuit had to be wrapped in special tape, he said. Thankfully, everything worked out and the mission was a success. And Scott has said, I still to this day think it's one of NASA's greatest accomplishments. Number five. Astronauts must drink recycled sweat and urine. This isn't as scary as it's just gross. Water is a limited resource in space, and because of this, astronauts must resort to recycling their own waste. It only takes about eight days for the systems on the space station to process water. NASA astronaut Scott Kelly consumed approximately 730 liters of recycled urine and sweat during his year-long mission. It tastes like bottled water, says Lane Carter, the water subsystem manager for the ISS at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. I don't really trust him though. <laughs> he continued, as long as as you can psychologically get past the point that it's recycled urine and condensate that comes out of the air. Now, condensate is the collected breath and sweat of the crew, shower runoff, and urine from animals on board the station. 93% of all water on board is reclaimed, according to a video posted by Canadian astronaut Chris Hatfield while he was on the space station in 2013. We can recycle about 6,000 extra liters of water for the station every year, he said. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do, but I don't think I could do that. Number four, there are floating animal corpses in space. Okay, well, this sounds strange right away, but this makes sense considering the first test subjects to make it to space were animals. Before space programs started sending people up into orbit, scientists couldn't agree on what it would be like for a living organism to leave Earth's atmosphere. What would be the effects of weightlessness on a mammal? How would the body handle radiation from the sun? So instead of sending people up in such a risky situation, the United States and Russia sent monkeys, chimps, dogs, and other animals into space in order to analyze such effects. And when a seemingly good thing turned into a failure, these animal corpses were launched into space where they reportedly float to this day and can be seen by astronauts making trips to space. While this is sad, this scene can seem a bit creepy too. Just imagine animal corpses floating around against the backdrop of a black and infinite space and you have to just go on doing what you came to do. I also feel like this would make me feel sad if I was an astronaut and was missing my pet and saw that. Number 3. Space Music 
Sound needs a medium to travel and thus it cannot be heard in the vacuum of space. Yet, astronauts have returned to Earth with fascinating tales of hearing odd noises while in space, which is terrifying. During the Apollo 10 mission, which was a test run for sending the first men to the moon, astronauts were carrying various equipment with them which was being tested to withstand space as they were deemed essential for the moon landing. While circling the moon, the astronauts on the vessel heard a certain whistling sort of music. The music lasted for almost an hour and creeped the living daylights out of the astronauts. One of them described the sound as a sort of otherworldly music. On returning to Earth, the astronauts struggled for a while on whether or not to tell NASA and the rest of the world about what they experienced. Later, astronaut Michael Collins, who was also part of the Apollo 11 mission with Aldrin and Armstrong, revealed hearing similar music while on the moon's surface. An engineer from US Space Agency said the noises likely came from interference caused by radios within the lunar and the command modules. However, Al Warden, an astronaut on Apollo 15, disputed the explanation. Number 2. Space Snake Retired NASA astronaut Dr. Story Musgrave has accomplished a lot in his career as a spaceman. Only the second astronaut to fly on six space flights, Dr. Musgrave is also the most formally educated astronaut with six academic degrees. He is also the only astronaut to fly aboard all five space shuttles. With all this, he seems to be a really credible source and he has claimed that he saw an eight foot long white snake floating through space. Now, it's not hard to imagine that this could have been a hose detached from the spacecraft, but Dr. Musgrave Grave remains adamant. He claims that he observed the six to eight foot long eel or serpent like creature on not one but two of his space flights. During multiple interviews, Dr. Musgrave has insisted that alien life is out there and that he has observed it, which is just scary. And coming in at number one, they're on the moon watching us. When astronaut Neil Armstrong took a walk on the moon and became the first man to do so in 1969, many conspiracy theories came to light. For one, people claimed he didn't actually go to the moon and that the footage was recorded in a studio. Of the many conspiracy theories surrounding this moment, there's one that remains a mystery to date. During the Apollo 11 mission, after Neil landed on the moon, NASA claims to have lost transmission for roughly two minutes. And in a reportedly secret message to NASA, Neil said, These babies were huge, sir. Enormous. Oh my god, you wouldn't believe it. I'm telling you, there are other spacecrafts out here lined up on the far side of the crater's edge. They're on the moon watching us. Now that sounds absolutely terrifying, and whether this is true or not, the fact that NASA lost transmission with Neil for two minutes is scary within itself. Being out in space on a different planet and being completely alone is terrifying. Terrifying.